continuing with our understanding of quality of service provisioning in the core side as well as the access side we would now look at a very interesting implementation aspect of uh, qs provisioning known as the flow state aware transport as the name implies we are going to talk about flows how the flows are in the understood how the flows are aggregated and how the flow state aware transport is finally provided we will first understand what is a flow followed by we'd look at some of the network functions which are expected to provide flow awareness and then we'd look at the architecture which is a standardized architecture for ngn flow aware qs provisioning as we know that a flow is an end to end connection or a communication between two endpoints which is identified through the source port source ip destination port destination ip and other information depending upon what kind of application is being used since we are talking about multimedia each qs multimedia requirement would necessitate that a flow has to be treated on priority the treatment has to be such that from the initiation of the flow to the termination of the flow all the network elements and all the procedures are within the QS service level agreement the flow is basically an identification of the quality of service through a class mapping whichever class it belongs to the flow belongs to corresponding traffic engineering has to be activated this activation of uh, traffic engineering can be preconfigured as in static where uh, the system administrator or the network management uh, performs one time a qs identification and flow based traffic engineering and then it is repeated for all the flows which comply to this class then we have dynamic flow aware transport in which the traffic is based on a flow that corresponds to a certain class the class and the traffic engineering belonging to that class are in real time brought into the enforcement entities if you remember we had the functional entities which would enforce the quality of service at run time so naturally the static provisioning is going to be limited and the dynamic provisioning is going to be uh, more uh, robust and it is scalable the qs for each flow is related in terms of uh, the packet delay that a network element such as a switch or a router can provide the loss ratio loss ratio actually means uh, the number of uh, packets sent uh, and the total number of packets uh, successfully received some of the packets might as well get lost the bandwidth requirement and of course uh giving it a priority so the flow has a specific bandwidth requirement and it also may have a certain priority requirement in case congestion um emerges on the network the network function which correspond to the flow state aware transport of uh, uh, each flow uh is implemented in the network nodes these network nodes can be uh, switches routers uh, gateways and so forth um then uh, the network function also includes uh, admission we 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 talk about it uh, quite often we have discussed it in detail the resource and admission control function is what implements it um to either accept or reject a connection uh, but now in this case remember that we are talking about connection as a flow um the function for signaling are therefore required to reserve the resources for qs support per flow now another dimension of a flow is that uh, a continuum or a sequence of ip packets uh, which move from one source to to the destination need some consistent and a uh, coherent response from the network so it means that once the qs has been agreed to then the flow as in the total number of packets need the same kind of response from the network 
let's look at uh, in a very basic and broad sense the functions for QS support which are provided by the network. Starting from the customer premises, the customer premises may or may not have a QS aware flow state based provisioning mechanism. So we see that we have a non flow state aware uh, customer premises network which in turn is connected to the end system flow state aware functionality. This can be an application which can be installed on the customer premises network. It could be a middleware either hosted on the customer premises or on the network side. Now we see we have certain entities like signaling function, QoS function, which are going to be connected to the service control function, resource and admission control function through the service control function. Now the user to network interface is providing connectivity also to the network element or a node which can do in-band processing of the functions. In-band signaling actually is something that we'll shortly talk about and then QS functions. Then we see that uh, this flow which is emerging from the non-FSA customer premises network is entering into an aggregation endpoint function. So it means some kind of aggregation is taking place which is accumulating all the flows uh, and creating a flow aggregate. Now this flow aggregate is big fat pipe which is again passing through the FSA nodes, routers and switches to perform the same in-band network processing for signaling and QS functions. Now this diagram actually tells us uh, that we have a customer premises equipment that is generating a flow. This flow is being treated for QS provisioning by uh, signaling. This signaling is in-band signaling. And then we have the aggregation of this flow with so many other flows. And this flow aggregate is then again passing through the network elements. We also need to look at the functional entities which would implement uh, this flow aware transport. So the first one is known as FIMFE or the flow aware information management. Now the information management deals with the kind of information of every flow. Uh, the flow information would include the flow identifier um, in the form of a table. Now each flow identifier would be aggregated or uh, bundled with other flows in the form of a flow aggregate. So it means flow aggregate would also have an ID which in turn would contain uh, multiple flows each with its own ID. The management of this particular information is carried out by the FIM FE. Then we have the exchange functional entity or the FEE FE. Now the functional information, a flow aware information exchange uh, functional entity actually allows this information to be exchanged between different network elements. So it means the uh, flow aggregate table is being exchanged between uh, multiple routers and switches and gateways. Uh, to develop a good understanding of how many flows are, are being aggregated in the overall network. Then we have uh, a FIG FE or the uh, flow aware information gathering functional entity. This is the uh, entity which accumulates or gathers the information from the entire network or uh, in other words an administrative domain. Uh, this handles the requests which are coming from applications because the final decision to treat a certain flow has to get the approval of FIG FE. So we, we can conclude that the location of FIM, FI and FIG are going to be at the respective positions. Since uh, the management is going to take place at the uh, lowest level in the hierarchy uh, where uh, each flow is bundled into an aggregate. So FIM is located in the edge switches. Multiple FIMs can actually be uh, aggregating uh, the traffic uh, in a domain. Uh, then we, we need to have at least one fee, that is one uh, exchange uh, uh, functional entity, which is going to allow the flow aggregates to be shared between uh, multiple FIMs. Uh, now this uh, information exchange functional entity uh, needs to uh, be either hosted on a separate server, it can be, uh, or it can even be hosted on the same edge switch 
because uh, if the scope of the network is small, then uh, the exchange of traffic is not going to require specialized resources. And then Fig FE is going to be the final entity. So it is at the top of the hierarchical uh, um, network elements uh, and the functional entities. So it is a separate entity placed as a centralized server. This is what we are going to see here. Now this diagram shows us multiple pieces of information all joined together. We have uh, on the left hand side, we have an end host that is generating a flow for the other end host on the right hand side. Then we have the FIMS, we have the fees, and then we have FIGS. So you see that uh, FIM is the one that receives this flow and then creates the flow aggregate. Now this flow aggregate, as you can see, is represented by a relatively uh, big, long, fat pipe shown to you here in white with dotted line running in the middle. This group or bundle of flows moves from one network to the other. So uh, then this information is being shared between multiple firms through fees, which is at a relatively higher administrative or hierarchical position. Then we have the, at the top, we have the information gathering functional entity, which in turn is connected to the application server. So it means the applications would require certain approval, certain admission, certain service. All this thing is managed through the FIG FE.